I'm going to show you a few different ways that you can enhance your IP security camera using the IP Cam Power PoE Power Splitter. As you can see, I have a lot of different gadgets here, and we're going to go through each one of them. But I want you to think of this, like I said, as an IP camera enhancer. It's going to make your IP security camera much cooler than it already is. Now, if you don't know how this works, basically this device takes incoming PoE and it converts it to 12 volt DC on this plug, but it also passes through the PoE on the Ethernet output. Let me show you how to hook it up. First, you get an Ethernet cable, and this adheres to standard Ethernet cable links. You know, you can go up to 328 feet, no problem. And you plug it into a PoE switch, and then you simply plug it the other end into the power splitter. And you should see a power light come on. Then, of course, you have an IP security camera. Here I'm using a Uniview camera, and I'm going to power it via PoE. This is what these are used for. You want to pass through the PoE to the camera so you can use this 12-volt DC plug for other things. So I'm going to plug it in and uh, should be on. Yep. I'm going to move this switch out of the way here so we can focus on some other things. So let's say you have a scenario where this camera, it's great, but it's just not putting out enough IR light at night. So brighten up that area at night and give you more IR. Just get you an extra IR illuminator. I got this off of Amazon. And the cool thing about using the IP camera power splitter is you're not going to have to run an extra power cable for this. You're just going to power it off the 12 volt DC connection. And it powers. You can't see it because it's invisible. But at night on the camera view, you could see this. And you could use this to enhance the camera's already existing IR or point it to areas where the camera is has blind spots. So pretty useful. Maybe you don't want to use IR. Maybe you want to use actual visible white light. Uh, well, I got this little disc light here. Uh, maybe you have like a porch camera and you want to uh, run an extra light right under your camera. Well, all you got to do is this right here. And you got yourself a little disc light. Or what about using these weatherproof LED light strips? They're really bright. A nice blue color. What about an audible alarm like this little siren? Uh, now, with audible alarms and horns and stuff, make sure you do not exceed your wattage. Um, this thing only uses about two watts, surprisingly, because it's really loud. But some of the uh, louder horns use up to 15 watts. You want to kind of uh, be aware of that, you know. Uh, be aware of your power budget when you're using audible equipment. But if you could be here, you would see just how loud this thing is. That is ear piercing. What about an audiovisual alarm? Or check out this device, which has a siren and a light built in together. Now, I know a lot of these devices, you wouldn't really want to be turned on all the time, obviously. Um, maybe the IR light and an actual white light, you'd want that to be on all the time, maybe. Um, but most of the time, you probably want some of these 12-volt DC devices to turn on based on triggers. For example, um, if the camera senses motion, trigger this to turn on. If your camera has alarm outputs on it, you can get very creative with this. I'm not going to go into depth on how to wire an alarm output to a camera, but basically all you're doing is running the positive wire through the alarm output on the camera and it acts as a circuit breaker and that circuit breaker opens when the alarm is triggered. Now that we have the alarm device wired up to the camera and we got the PoE power splitter connected, now we got to go into the software and set up the alarm device there. Um, one thing to know about devices like this is when it comes to security camera purposes, the default mode is always going to be normally open. And the difference between normally open and normally closed is beyond the extent of this video. But just to get you started, if you're not 
familiar with how alarm devices work. Just think of normally open as always in the off position. I know that sounds really weird, but again, not for this video. Um, but we got to set it up in software here. So what we got to do here is go to events and alarm output section. Now, depending on what camera you're using, yours might look totally different than this, but you just got to go to the alarm output section and uh, set this up. Um, you know, you might need to contact your camera manufacturer if you need help with that. But uh, basically what we do here is I'll show you how I know this is always in normally open in the default status. Because when I change it to normally closed like this and I click save, So that means we want it in the normally open position as the default position. Now we got to set up the camera to trigger the alarm based on a behavior. Um, and this is where it gets cool. So a lot of these cameras nowadays, most of them actually, most of the new ones have what's called human detection features and um, vehicle detection. I really like the human detection. I mean, you can also set up the camera to trigger this alarm based on simple motion detection. You can do that as well. That's fine, but if you have an area with a lot of motion, this thing's gonna be going off all the time. So I'm gonna set this up as a uh, human detection. And when it detects a human, it's gonna trigger this alarm. And to do that, all we do is go to intelligent and then we go to intrusion here. And um, I already have an area set up here where if I walk in that box and it detects a human, it's going to trigger this. And I got to make sure I have the correct trigger action, which is alarm output. When, whenever it senses a person in that box, what trigger action do you want it to do? Well, you want it to make the alarm output go off. So let's see if this actually works. All right, I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna walk and hopefully when I walk in that box, it's gonna go off. Check this out. I have this red LED strip here and I'm actually going to apply it and tape it to the base of this camera. I'm gonna do something pretty cool with it. Check it out. As you see, I have two alarm devices connected to the alarm output, and that's fine. You know, again, you can uh, connect as many alarm devices to the device. Just be aware of your wattage budget. Um, you only get about 1.2 amps maximum of 12 volt DC output. Um, so just make sure you don't exceed that, and I'm far from that. This, this uh, light puts out about three watts, and I think this uh, siren puts out maybe two watts or something like that. So we're way under that, um, but we're going to see if this works. Um, I think it's going to be pretty cool. Let's check it out. Uh, I can't even begin to tell you how loud that little siren is. That is just crazy. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'm not done yet though. I got something really cool for you. Check this out. I found this strobe controller and it has one input and two outputs so it can have like alternate strobes um, and that's what i plan on doing with this camera i want to alternate the red and the blue 
it's going to look really sweet. So I'm going to get it wired up. All right, I got it wired up. Um, I don't have it wired to the alarm just yet. I'm going to test the strobe pattern I want before I do that. Kind of going to test this just to see what it looks like. But uh, I know it's kind of a mess right now, but I'll show you how it works. So here's the 12-volt DC power source. Obviously, I'm going to plug that in, in there. But this is the 12-volt DC input. There's one input. And then there's two outputs. And um, each output is going to a light. So here's output one, and it's going to the red light. And output two is going to the blue light. And I know I don't have these wired up really good. Uh, this, obviously, this is just for quick and dirty purposes. But that's how it works. And it's going to give me some different strobe options. So I'm just going to plug in the 12-volt DC part of the power splitter just to test this real quick. Sweet. That is cool. I really like that strobe pattern, actually. Um, but if you push this button, you have different strobe patterns, as you can see. That's pretty cool, too. I like that. There's actually 36 strobe patterns on here. Oh, that's cool. So I'm going to find the strobe pattern that I want, and I'm actually also going to hook up the siren to the alarm. I'm going to set this all up, and this is going to be probably the world's best audio-visual deterrence camera that you've ever seen. I think I'm going to settle on that pattern, just a typical red and blue quick flashing pattern. I like it. Okay, I got everything wired up here. Um, thank God this is not a wiring tutorial. I'm not even going to show you how I did this or try to explain. Uh, I'd spend a lot more time wiring this if I was going to do an actual install, but I just did a quick and dirty. Um, thank God this is just a video to show you the capabilities of what this thing can do. But um, yeah, so basically this whole setup right here is being powered by that. Um, the camera and all the alarm devices, all the 12 volt DC devices is being powered by this, the IP cam power PoE splitter by one cable run. So no need to run an extra 12 volt wire to all this stuff. Um, that's the point. So now I'm going to do the alarm walkthrough. I got everything set up as you can see here and uh, let's check it out, see if it works. Let's see. All right, here we go. Let's go again and get a close up of that camera. That is pretty cool. As I said, there are some uh, deterrence cameras out there, but that right there is probably the world's coolest deterrence camera and loudest and flashiest. And you know what's cool about this camera? It also has a microphone and speaker, so you can do live talk down if you wanted to. Um, but you know what? If it didn't have a mic and speaker, you know what you could do? You could wire it up to the IP cam power PoE power splitter. You wouldn't even have to run an extra wire to the microphone and speaker. So a lot of cool things you can do. It's really all up to your creativity what you can do with this thing. What do you plan on doing with it?
What kind of creation do you plan on making?